two, function notation. Okay. If an equation represents a function, each input will always have one output. Therefore, passing the vertical line pass. I'm just abbreviating that. It can be written using function notation. For function four, where the output y is renamed such as f of x, or g of x, or q of x, or d of x, or l of x. Okay? It's just another way of writing y. So if I want to change these equations into function notation, this is not going to change. 3x squared is not going to change. 2x plus 1 is not going to change. Negative 3x cubed plus 5x minus 4 is not going to change. The only thing that's going to change is, instead of y, I'm going to put, we'll call it f of x. f of x. f of x means function in terms of x. Okay, so y equals x plus 2, also known as function of x. f of x equals x plus 2. So we're going to plug these in, and we're just going to do negative 2 plus 2, negative 1 plus 2, 0 plus 2, 1 plus 2, 2 plus 2. And then that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we're going to graph those. So negative 2, 0 is right here. Negative 1, positive 1 is right here. 0, 2 is right here. 1, 3, 2, 4. Now, when it says evaluate each, when it says f of 0, that means when you plug in 0, what you get. When you plug in 0, you get 2. When you plug in 1, you get 3. When you plug in negative 2, you get 0. When you plug in negative 1, you get 1. And when you plug in 2, you get 4. That's all it's saying. When you plug those numbers in for x, what do you get for y? Okay. And then this is working backwards. If f of x is 2, in other words, if y is 2, what is x? So you're going to look here, right? You're going to look here. So y of 2, x of 0. y of 1, x of negative 1. y of 4, x of 2. y of 0, x of negative 2. Okay, look, look, y is 2, so x is 0. If y is 1, x is negative 1. If y is 4, x is 2. If y is 0, x is negative 2. It's just working backwards. These are all the same thing as y. So what this was saying was, and these are all x's right here. So this is if I know x, what's y? If I know y, what's x? Just working back and forth. Just kind of a training exercise. That got messed up. Let's try that again. Okay. So our lines already drawn. Lines already drawn. These are our x's, right? It's going to find y. So basically it says x of negative 4. So x of negative 4, four means what? y of what? Okay. 
x of 0 means y of, x of 2 means y of, x of 4 means y of 0. Now working backwards, because remember, these are all y's. So if y is 3, right, what's x? Negative 2. If y is 0, if y is 0, x is 4. If y is 1, x is right here, come on. Y is 1, what's x? 1, flat Okay. Same thing. If we know these are our x's, x of negative 1 gives us what for y? Good, negative 4. x of 0 gives us negative 3. 1 gives us negative 2. 3 gives us 0. And 5 gives us 2. Working backwards, remember, these are all y. So if y is negative 4, what is our x? Negative 1. If y is negative 2, what's our x? 1. And if y is positive 1, what we didn't do, x is y is 1, x is What's the x coordinate that gets you 1? What's the number right here? 4. Okay, evaluate. So here's my y equals, f of x equals. We're just popping this 1 right in here, and this 2 right in here, and this negative 6 right in there. So we're just going to do. 2 times 1 minus 3, 2 times 2 minus 3, and 2 times negative 6 minus 3. So, if I plug 1 in for x, I get 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. If I plug 2 in for x, I get 4 minus 3, which is 1. The function of negative 6 is negative 12 minus 3, which is minus 15. So if I plug those numbers in, f of 1 gives me negative 1. f of 2 gives me 1. f of negative 6 gives me negative 15. Okay, same thing. I'm going to plug negative 3 in here. 2 times negative 3 squared. 2 times 5 squared. 2 times 1 half squared. So we always square first. We also are not going to type negative 3 squared into our calculator because we know better. What's negative 3 times negative 3? Times 2 is 18. So h of negative 3 equals 18. In other words, if I plug in negative 3, I get 18. So that would be, you know, this point right here, like that. Negative 3, 18. So 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50. So h of 5 equals 50. And you got to be careful here. One half squared means one half times one half. One times one on the top, one. Two times two on the bottom, four. Okay. So one fourth of two. Okay. One fourth of two is one half. So h of one half 
equals one half. In other words, if I had two dollars and I had it split up among four people, everybody would get fifty cents, half a dollar. And it's going to be the same thing. Just now we're doing the square root. But that's okay. So we're just going to do the square root of nine, square root of four, square root of negative twenty-five. So g of nine equals three. G of 4 equals 2, and G of negative 25 equals no solution, no real solution. We don't do that yet. We don't do that for algebra 2. Okay, last but not, well, not last but not least, but one more example. We're going to plug in 30 here. The absolute value of 30 plus 1. The absolute value, oopsie. Absolute value of negative 30 plus 1. And the absolute value of 20 plus 1. Well, 30 plus 1 is 31. So f of 30 equals 31. If I plug in negative 30, well, be careful. Negative 30 plus 1 is negative 29. But the actual value of negative 29 is, in other words, remember, how many spaces away from 0 is negative 29? It's 29 spaces. And then f of 20, if I plug 20 in, I get 21. Now we're doing q of f. Again, it can be any letter. So 2 to the power of something. So we're going to do 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 2, and 2 to the power of negative 2. So anything to the 0 power is what? No. One. Very good. Two squared is four. You have to be careful with this one. Q of negative two. Well, just take the previous answer. What's two squared? Four. But we're going to move it down to the bottom because of the negative exponent. One fourth. And okay, we're just practicing this over and over here. So, now this one, notice, look, at the top, you have an F function and a G function. So you have to pay attention now which one you're plugging into. So G of negative 5, we're looking here. So that's negative 5 squared. So G of 5, sorry, my bad, negative 5 equals 25. But with this f of 2, we're going to plug it into this one, because it's f of x. So that's 1 half of 2 minus 3. f of 2 is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. So f of negative 2 gives me 2. So if I plug in x of negative 2, I get y of positive 2. Now, which one is bigger? Is g of negative 5 or f of 2 larger? F of 2 gives me 2. G of negative 5 gives me 25. 25 is bigger than 2, so g of negative 5 is greater. Right? Or this. So we can accept either answer. It's greater than or greater than or equal. So either one of those answers would be fine. Aha. Okay, now we're plugging negative 2 into this one. 2, negative 2 cubed plus 6. Well, 
What's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? Let's make it easy. What's 2 times 2? Times 2. 8. You know we got an 8, right? So it's a negative times a negative. Times a negative. Negative. So now we have 2 times negative 8. Negative 16. Plus 6 is negative 10. So f of negative 2 gives me negative 10. Now we're going to plug negative 8 in here. Cube root of negative 8 minus 1. Now let's be careful with this. What is the cube root of negative 8? Times two times two is eight. Negative two times negative two times eight is shows was negative one. So this is negative two minus one. So g of negative eight is negative three. Now careful, which is bigger, negative ten or negative three? Yes. Okay. A lot of people want to say negative ten because ten is bigger than three. But we're talking about negative. So this is where you ask yourself, would I rather be in debt $3 or $10? $3, which means negative 3 is larger. So that means this function is the bigger one. Okay. So negative 8. Thing. Either one of those answers would be appropriate. And one more of these sample ones. I'm going to plug 16 in right here because it's F. I'm going to plug G, negative 3 in here because it's G. So this says the square root of 16 plus 4. This says the absolute value of negative 3 minus 7. So Square root of 16 is 4, plus 6 is 10. So that means f of 16 gives me 10. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. The absolute value of that is 10. So g of negative 3 equals 10. And then we're going to do one more, f of negative 16, okay? So f of negative 16 is uh, square root of negative 16 plus 6. That's going to be the empty set. So these are both f of 16 and g of negative 3 are both equal, right? But since they're equal, we can also say these because they have an equal in them. Greater than or equal, less than or equal, equal. As long as it says equal. Okay, now there's a crazy thing in math called a piecewise function, which is basically where you take a line, you draw it, and then you snip it and throw away part of it. So, in this one, it says y is equal to negative 2x if x is greater than 1, and x plus 3 if x is less than or equal to 1. This means you only use this part when x is greater than 1, and you only use this part if it's less than or equal to 1. <clears throat> so, negative 3. Be careful with this. First off, negative 3. Is that greater than 1 or less than or equal to 1? It's less than. So we're going to plug in negative 3 into this one. So f of negative 3 gives me 0. 2. 
Is that greater than 1 or less than or equal to 1? So we're going to plug it into this one. Negative 2 times 2. So f of 2 gives me negative 4. 1. Is that greater than 1 or less than or equal to 1? Less than or equal. So I'm going to plug it into this bad boy. 1 plus 3, and say that f of 1 gives me 4. 